submerged curved surface. So now, uh, actually, I'm going to discuss the theories when the hydrostatic force so when there is a curved surface and definitely submerged curved surface. So let's say this is the free surface, okay, and we have a a curved surface like that. Let's say just for understanding. Let's say this is the curved surface. If we do a yeah, just consider this is very small elementary section and uh, this is actually the water okay so now what we will do is let's say the force this is very small section so in this section we will have the elementary force df okay so let's say this is uh, df it is acting this way right um so if we consider uh, this height actually it will be this elevation is haze and the pressure due to this elevation it is rho g haze we all know right yeah so the pressure is rho g haze so now if we actually want to calculate the the pressure force on this surface so this is d this is elementary section we'll say this area is da very small section and the force is df now if we actually want to calculate this df you know the force equal pressure into area here the pressure is rho g haze so write down this is rho g haze and the area da so da so now this is the case df equal this so now we know um once we have very small elementary sections then this is the process if we want to get for the entire you know the the, the entire uh, surface then we need to actually integrate this system but here if you see the pressure um, we usually if you want to get the um, the the force for the entire surface we'll integrate that's the general procedure but we all know that pressure always acts to the normal directions that means it will create a 90 degree angle right this is always the case so here the pressure is acting this way and if you just go a bit far from this point you see this is a curved surface that means it is changing so the pressure if we calculate the pressure it should act always like it should always create a 90 degree angle that means it should be always in normal directions so when we have the elementary section like this we can easily get if the surface is flat surface it's not a curved surface just a you know um, a straight surface then we can easily do that but here this is a curved surface the direction is continuously changing so we cannot do this way so what we need to do is we need more explanation we need to do more analysis for this case so what we'll do we'll calculate um the the resultant force or the or the magnitude of the force different ways what we will do we'll consider we'll calculate the the x component of the force and the y component of the force the dfy so that means this is actually the elementary uh, force along the horizontal axis this is the vertical axis you know so once we have this dfx and dfy then we can write it down like this the f um we, we we will calculate the dfx so from dfx we will get fx from dfy we will get fy and the sum of this this is the square root the fx is squared and fy is squared that's that you know the hydrostatic force acting this way or you can say this is the resultant force in some book uh, they write it is resultant force instead of fx some people say this is the horizontal force or instead of fy some people say it's the vertical force so whatever you want you can use it so now we will calculate okay how we can get this fx and the fy right for better understanding um this is actually you see this is the force df if this is the vertical force it makes an angle theta like this so if i just draw it here if i just draw it here so say this is df it makes the angle theta 
So you know always if it is the angle theta, right? So this will be the sine theta. So we can say this is df sine theta and this is df cos theta. I'm not ex going to explain it again because um, we already know how the sine and the cos theta rules. So if you are not sure, check some um, videos from last week. So now this is df sine theta, df cos theta. When um, this is the vertical axis, that means through this x, this vertical, sorry, this horizontal axis, the force is df sine theta. For the vertical axis, this is df cos theta. So write it down, df x, this is equal df sine theta. And df y, this is df cos theta. You see, we'll, we'll initially we'll calculate dfx, we'll integrate it, then we'll get fx. So again, df, we know it is rho g h da. So if I just write it down here, dfx, it is equal rho g h da sine theta. Right. So we got it. Now, if we integrate this, if we integrate this, then this integration and this differentiation side will cancel out each other. So it will be fx. You see, density, gravity, this is constant. Put it out of the domain. Then it will be h da sine theta. So this is actually the total force on the in this projected area, in this vertical plane. So this is the total force along the fx. Okay. So this is fx we got. Now we'll calculate the dfy. So let's write it down here. So dfy we got it is um, df cos theta. And df equal rho g h da and we have cos theta. Right. So this is dfy. Now just simply integrate it. We know differentiation integration sign will cancel out each other because there is just is opposite. And here the rho g is the constant value. So it will be as da cos theta. So this is actually, you can see, here is the, here is the uh, elevation here. And we have da cos theta. I will show you here. Um, oops. Yeah, so you see here, it actually makes an angle. It will, this horizontal axis, it will also make an angle here, here like this. So if I just draw it like, uh, let's say, if I draw it here, it will be like, um, okay, let's draw it here. So it will be like this. So that's the angle theta, okay? And this is actually dA. So as it creates the angle theta here, so this on vertical one, it will be dA sine theta, dA sine theta, and this horizontal on dA. So it will be cos theta. So we know the dA cos theta is actually this, and we have the haze. So if we just multiply this dA cos theta into this haze, this is actually the volume of the liquid above the curved surface. So we can say this is actually the volume, or we can say the total volume of liquid above the curved surface and if we multiply the rho g with the volume this is called the total weight the total weight of the liquid so that's actually um, we can say the force acting through this if y this is the total weight of the fluid We'll explain this later on. So now we have got fx and the fy. Now the total force, the resultant force, it is fx squared plus fy squared. So what do you need to know, guys, is this formula. If you don't know the calculation, it doesn't matter, but you need to know this. So when we'll calculate the resultant force for a submerged curved surface, then we need the fx, fy, and then the square root, the sum of the square root of this. This is the thing. And if we actually want to calculate the angle, say the alpha, it will be the 
you know, the, the vertical force and the horizontal force. So it could be confusing for some problems. So when we will have some problem, we'll discuss it. So this is how we will calculate the angle and this is how we'll calculate the, you know, the, the resultant force. So that's it. And if you don't know how to do all these calculations, it doesn't matter. But if you know these two equations, it should be fine. Yeah, so we'll solve some problem during the lecture.